In the tunnel. In the tunnel. In the tunnel. You're listening to In the Tunnel. Hello and welcome to In the Tunnel, episode number 79, take like 58. Mad. Oh my god. <laughs> Anything you want to say at the start of this episode? Oh no, you told me to shut up before the start of the show, so I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk. You're allowed to Jesus talk now, Christ. the show has started. Here we fucking go. <laughs> it's like an oh old my Mary... God. It's like an old married couple, but we live 400 miles away. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's just get into it. All right. So, first thing we want to talk about, the NFL, right? Sure. So, here were our division standing. Uh, yeah. Anything yeah, of this, note? So, uh, this is uh, looking from this past week because yeah. we're still waiting... A week 12 to end because it'll <laughs> never fucking end. And we'll get to that in a second. It ends but, yeah. um, uh Eventually, I'd like the Chiefs to lose again, but that's not going to happen because <laughs> they beat the shit out of everybody. Um, I, I, I don't really know the fact that the Giants, like, let's throw the graphic out the window here. The Giants are in first place in the <laughs> NFC East because they've. <laughs> Somehow won four straight games. I don't know how. Um, and then as soon as they got decent enough to win some games, Daniel Jones got hurt and is expected to miss a significant amount of time. So Colt McCoy is now their starter. Yep. Colt McCoy, who, as we um, as we put in our uh, pre-episode uh, planning, is just as tall as me and slightly heavier than me in weight. Slightly, like very slightly, dude. All right, you know, I, I get it. I have to lose some weight, but like, <laughs> uh, yeah. So this Steelers two twelve, and I'm like two hundred. So Steelers are still undefeated, and they will still be undefeated for another few days. We'll get to that in a second. A few weeks at this rate, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Like, I'm I'm sorry, but like, God damn. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Otherwise, like nothing much has really changed in terms of the standing. Of course not, because yeah, because yeah. It, it just, I said. I mean, what did you expect that Jacksonville was actually going to beat the Browns? It was a close <laughs> game, but did you expect it was really going to happen? <laughs> I mean, they were on their third quarterback, and they've been pretty much just doing like, well, we're seeing what we've got here thing. But the thing is, they threw Mike Glennon in there. He's like, he's been in the league for like eight years now. You kind of know what you're getting. Yeah. Um, and then is the Raiders losing forty three to six to the Falcons? Because I think I go through this loop of are the Raiders good? Are the Raiders bad? And they hang around with the Chiefs. They beat the Chiefs once, almost beat them a second time. And I have no fucking idea <laughs> what's going on now. They're probably playing to the level of their opponent. Yep, probably. Can't say you're wrong there. <laughs> yeah. Um. Aside from that, like, again, nothing much has really changed. You still have that big divide of teams in the NFC South where the two top and the two bottom teams are pretty far apart same with the AFC South uh the good thing we're seeing here is the Patriots have six losses uh so that does I mean, mean but the thing is they they did they're now five and six mm -hmm. so the Patriots are starting to get into that land where it's like you know the, uh, they'll probably get week 18 they'll probably end up playing the Steelers and they'll be the eight seed 
because of the week yeah. 18 scenario, and then they'll beat them. Okay, but like still, this being five and six right now, like they actually have a chance of not winning 10 games. Yeah, but at the same time, they did just beat the Cardinals. It's it, also the Cardinals. To... Yeah, but the Cardinals were, sh- were six and four. The Cardinals have Kyler Murray, who's going to pass for 4,000 yards and yeah. run for at least 700 this year. <laughs> so I that is something. Okay, yeah, I, I can see that. Uh, yeah, NFC East is still uh, so bad that the Giants are basically in first place. Uh... And, and the NFC North is starting to separate itself because the Vikings... This is the time of the year where the Vikings decide that they're going to be relatively good. Yep. And then they start climbing up the rankings to grab a wild card spot. Mm-hmm. And then we see the Browns slowly fall. Or not the Browns, the Bears. Bears, yeah. Slowly fall. Yeah. The, the Browns are not slowly falling. Uh, they are 7-3. Yet. Not yet, but stay tuned on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, they've had a pretty good year. Regardless of like where they end. Who would have thought that a Cleveland team would be good without OBJ? But, like, that that's not even... The Who would have thought that like, OBJ wasn't the glue guy? But, like, the, the point is that, like, even, like, I didn't expect them to be 7-3, and three, let alone... Eight, yeah, now they're 8-3. and three. Yeah, well, that when we have the standings at 7-3, and three, now they're 8-3, and three, like... Heck, I, I expected them to be, like, a 500 team, maybe just barely above it, and they're looking like like instead of an eight and eight, nine and seven, they could hit the ten win mark easily. I mean, I said it last year, and I still maintain it. But obviously, it looks like it's coming to fruition. When they got OBJ and they got Landry and they got all the guys and the, all the weapons, I was a very huge proponent of. It's going to take a year to mesh. And now they they had their year of me you know middle of the road mediocrity, mm-hmm. but now here we go. Okay, I mean even even then, like I expect them to be just barely like you know eight and eight, nine and seven. So with the start they've had, they've kind of blown my expectations out of the water. I mean, don't there's still plenty of time. I mean, even. but it's also like. If if I'm expecting them to be eight and eight, nine and seven by the end of the year, I, I'm probably looking at like a six and five team right now, not an eight and three. Crazier things have happened. Yeah, right? I know. I'm just saying. You've seen teams start the year eight and zero and miss the playoffs. Yep. Uh, it doesn't look like that's happening for the Steelers, but yeah. So why don't we just get into that? Sure. Because, yeah. All right. <laughs> so, th- this was going to be a Thanksgiving night game. Yes. Perfect environment, under the lights, Steelers with their color rush jerseys on. It was going to be probably a really close game and a, a really competitive game, mm-hmm. as they always are for Steelers-Ravens. And then the COVID shit hits. Now... I will not blame the Ravens for COVID and have it, you know, members of their organization having COVID because at this point or at this point in the year, it, yeah. it's a spike in cases. It's clearly, if you're paying attention to like ESPN and everything like that, affecting tons of college basketball games, college football games, it's just becoming harder to handle. NFL wise, there's probably a guy on 25 teams right now, uh, currently who has. It. Yep. Um. So that in there, I have no ill will towards the Ravens because can't really control that. Is right at this exactly. point, yeah. But what I do have a problem with is as it comes back around later to. Th- to the likeness of 20 plus players landing on the COVID list. Now, this includes Lamar Jackson, who will not be playing in the game against the Steelers 
unless that game is week 18 and it gets postponed per- further. But this game has now gone from Thanksgiving to Sunday at 115 to tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, December 1st, I believe. Yep. And then after that, it's now, we found out earlier today, it's postponed again to Wednesday, December 2nd at whopping 3.40 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, granted, a lot of people are still working at home because it's pandemic. There's still a, a good portion of the country that has now returned to work and they work nine to five jobs. I work until 3.30 and this game is going to start before I get home. Yeah. So I'm I'm probably in decent shape to see at least most of it. But the fact of the matter is like and the and the really funny part is being a Jewish guy knowing that my religion wasn't the reason why this game happened at 3.40 p.m. NBC is airing the Rockefeller Plaza tree lighting Wednesday night. Yep. So they bump the game up to the afternoon. Yep. So as if I needed more ammo to not like Christmas, <laughs> they, they took at least the first half of the first quarter of the Steelers game from me. Um, uh, I actually, but, I, I do want to bring up though. So with how the schedulers are being rearranged though, because this game is on Wednesday, right? Which means as that, far as we know, there's still time for it to. For, yeah, but as far as we know, the Steelers game cannot happen on Sunday, so it moved to Monday. If if yeah. they play on Wednesday, okay. And that game's at five p.m. Yes, because why not? But the big thing is the Ravens game moved to Tuesday of next week. Against mm-hmm. the Cowboys, right? Yep. That means that Lamar Jackson could actually play in that game. This is not the game against us. Yeah, no, no. But if it was Monday, he could not, I don't think. It was actually because it moved to Tuesday. Yeah, which isn't that a crock of shit, too. That they move the Ravens to Tuesday, and yet somehow they move us to Monday, and they're like, these guys are playing the same day. Why wouldn't we just give them two different days afterwards? It's like, why aren't both teams playing on Tuesday next week? <laughs> so, and, and this is where th- the anger starts to come in. So now, you know, we addressed it even killed, but now I ramp up. <laughs> um, so the bullshit part is the Ravens deciding that and let, I can go to Twitter here to see the variety of tweets on it, but I don't need to. That they needed this postponed from Tuesday to Wednesday because uh, they needed more time for walkthroughs, they said, and that they felt that uh, they would strain their muscles if they played the game Tuesday instead of Wednesday. They've had an extra four days. Well, which brings me to my thought, which is, don't you stretch before the game? (laughs) Your muscles don't stay loose for 48 hours. Especially if you take a flight, at which point there's tighter air pressure, which would probably constrict your muscles anyway. So, don't give me shit about you need more time to loosen your bodies. That's not how the body works. Then don't give me this shit about um, only after 20 players are on the COVID list that the Ravens don't want to play the game Tuesday because of fear that the outbreak isn't contained and that they don't want to play the game because they feel that they would be at risk of getting COVID from the Steelers who have one positive test and have no subsequent days of positive tests since the guy who tested positive got it. Look yourselves in the mirror. 
It's your own building where this is going on. And then you're going to do a potential strike against labor uh, union approval <laughs> and refuse to play Tuesday. Okay, well, what's stopping you from forfeiting? Because if you're not going to play Tuesday, there's 31 other teams in this league who have not resorted to that. The Broncos didn't have a fucking quarterback. They, they asked for the postponement. The NFL said no. They didn't forfeit. They took that huge loss and they moved on. Now, this is a team, and I cannot stress this enough, and I've, as much as I've been listening to the sports radio here in Pittsburgh, they have not said a word about this. The, the Ravens currently occupy the eighth spot in the AFC. If the NFL goes to a week 18, each conference opens up to eight teams. Mm -hmm. Who benefits the most from not playing this week? Well, I it mean, would we be the, the Ravens. Yeah. The it's Ravens put themselves in playoff position despite the fact that they are reeling and have lost more games than they've won in the past five or six weeks. Mm -hmm. So... Kudos to the Ravens for spotting a chance to strategize. But if you're the NFL, you, you can't let that happen. You can't let the Ravens dictate the flow. And then what's really just over the top is that the, it's inconsistent by the NFL. The, the Denver shit is different, yes. Tennessee didn't get this big of a break when they had an outbreak. Yes. That was partly because Tennessee went to a public high school and practiced anyway. And they really shouldn't have been. But <laughs> so, the yeah. fact of the matter is, and I, I don't want to, to play the victim card towards the Steelers, but at the same time, they're the only team in the NFL that's seen their schedule move this much. Yep. And, yep. and to bend over backwards for the Ravens to the point where – Fun fact, if the game was played tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, December 1st, what would have happened is J.K. Dobbins and Mark Ingram, the two leading rushers for the Ravens, wouldn't have been able to play because of being on the COVID isolation list. Well, now that the game's on Wednesday, they're eligible to play. Mm -hmm. And the first time that the Ravens and Steelers played, the Steelers gave up like 250 yards rushing to the Ravens. So isn't that some shit that the Ravens get two of their leading weapons back because they were able to push the NFL forward or further one day? Yep. So this all reeks of some kind of strate strategized bullshit, and it's a little infuriating, especially with not being able to watch the full game because of the scheduling of it. Yep. But at I the mean, end of the day, and I, 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 I don't really tweet much anymore, but I, I tweeted this up. This is very much like, I don't know if you had this experience, but if you've ever like uh, wanted to like go out with a girl or you thought you had a good vibe with a girl and you uh, tried to make plans with her and they, she makes plans with you for like Friday night. And then Friday comes along and you're like, you're like, so are we still on for tonight? And they go, oh no, something came up. Let's do, let's do like next Tuesday. And then like Tuesday comes up and she's like, oh, you know, I, it, I, it just doesn't, I don't know. I, I think I like, I can't get someone to watch my dog or something like that. And it's like, well, Okay. So when are we doing this? Because it certainly seems like at this point you're starting to create some excuses. And then it's like you, you start to realize like the other person on the end of the conversation that you're in just doesn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. And you're wasting time. So as an NFL fan and as a Steelers fan, I'm looking at this like, oh, this is awesome. They're going to play Thanksgiving night. 
I get to like relax, not do much that day, watch the game, drink some beers, and then not have to worry about much the next day. And then that gets postponed. Well, it's okay. They're still playing Sunday. There's no big deal there. Uh, and then it goes to Tuesday. And it's like, okay. So now you have me a little skeptical that this thing's going to get the Tuesday. But you know what? I'll, I'll believe you. I'll, we'll go for Tuesday. And then Tuesday comes and it gets postponed again. And now I'm like, I, I don't, I can't, it's like, you know, the three little pigs, or was it no, um, um, what, what's the, uh, fairy tale? I um, don't know. <laughs> Is it Little Red Riding Hood or? Uh, oh. uh no. Um. Hey, what? No, I don't think so. But you, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like you, you've now it. you've now communicated the message to the village people enough to where they've bitten on it so many times that it's like, well, now when you say that it's going to happen, I just don't believe you. I just don't. <laughs> All this right. game's either gonna happen or it's not, but right now I don't believe it's gonna happen. All right, uh, okay. I'm past the point of believing it. Anyway, now that we've ranted on the NFL for quite a while, uh, let's talk about some baseball. Fuck Baltimore. The Inner Harbor is nice, but fuck every other part of it. <laughs> I hope the Orioles never win again. So, uh, what do we want to talk about in? Terms of baseball. Yeah, I created a graphic for baseball because I used the PowerPoint from last week. Moving on. Oh, moving on. Baseball has nothing. Great. Yeah, no, not all these slides float as well as they should. <laughs> anyway. Who would have thought? Something I know we have some content for. <laughs> we have content? The NBA. All right, the NBA. What are we going through today? The NBA draft, which we thought... When we first did a pre-production meeting for this, I thought that we were in a good spot. I was like, I, we have to brag about that we we got picks right for the mock draft this year. We got damn close, guys. We got real damn close. We did not get any right again this year. <laughs> we had... We had... Uh, and let's, let's go to let's go to the tape. Let's look back at the mock draft. So I think this one was it, right? No, that's the actual result. Oh, okay. Well, so there's NBA draft results at the top. Hmm. So the mock draft we had Lamelo Ball going number one. We had James Wiseman going number three. That didn't happen like that. Lamelo <laughs> went number three. Yeah. And Wiseman went number two. Uh -huh. We had Edwards going 30. He went number one. He at least went in our draft, dude. <laughs> and from there, you know, it, it was all downhill. Yep. Uh, is there any other, like, ones that are notable from us? Or was that it? Close, but didn't cut it. Let's see here. Uh, let me look through this on my end. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I have no faith in the, the like top ten. So, I mean, we got that the Magic drafted a point guard. Oh, it's not really narrowing it down. But... Yeah, that. Yeah, let's let's keep going. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I that's think where anyone, we had yeah. Anthony anyone Edwards. Could, yep. We had Anthony Edwards last because in the first round, at least. Because why not? Oh, yeah. Oh, so here we had what Isaac Okoro going fifth in the actual draft. I saw his name somewhere. We had him going sixth. Pretty close for us. Pretty damn close, dude. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, we were pretty far off, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But that's okay, you know. For us being close in multiple spots is really good because it, it should not happen like that for us. 
We spun a wheel and got close on four draft picks. Yeah. Last year, we spun a wheel and got close on, like, one. I think we got, like, Tyler Harrow pick, like, one-off. Yeah, it was one-off. It was like you went to the Heat and then we had him like to the Hornets or something. Yeah, the pick after, I'm pretty sure. And then a year later, our Twitter feed blew up with people saying like this was the stupidest thing ever. It's like, yeah, we we created this a year ago. <laughs> we get that it's the NBA Finals now, but like <laughs> this is not this is not when it happened. I I had to get on our Twitter account, which we rarely use, and like clarify and be like, I uh, clarify to like 20 people like. Yeah, this was like we spun a wheel. <laughs> like we didn't actually put any thought into this. It was supposed to be humorous, yeah. and then people were like, "Oh, okay, yeah, that's cool." <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, let's talk about some talk turkey free agency. Oh God, another graphic I can't read. Yeah. So what? Anthony Davis is still a free agent. Kind of. He was supposed to. Kind of. Not, that, that's not a free agent. Actually, no. He was supposed to sign a deal like right after Thanksgiving when some new like media deal or something sunk in, mm. I thought. Um, but it doesn't look like he signed one yet. He's supposed to. He, he's like tentatively re-signed with the Lakers. Okay. But he has not actually done it. Yeah. Just like Dwight Howard when he said that he was... Going back to the Lakers only to find out that the Lakers didn't offer him a deal. Yeah. And he's like the number seven free agent, so he went to Philadelphia on a one year deal. Yeah, that's the, not bad. Gordon Hayward is still a free agent. Gord no, well no, he's not. Isn't he? No. Or no, it's... He he got signed and traded. Oh, he got signed and so traded? He was gonna sign with Charlotte uh straight up. Okay. And uh, then for some reason, because for, for Charlotte, that seems like a stupid move to go sign a trade when you could have just signed him straight up. Yeah. But uh, I guess they got some kind of compensation that was worthwhile in return. Um, so they went sign and trade and then waived Nick Batum, who was good with the Blazers like seven years ago. Okay. But in his time with Charlotte has been trash because mm. he's just one of those three and D or three and defense kind of players. But okay, he kind of can't really succeed as the top guy, so he's now being waived. Um, I mean, the other thing that we get from this list is most of these guys have been signed in some way, as either yeah. parts of sign and trades is just signed. Um, yeah, but the fun thing is, is Gordon Hayward is now going to make $120 million in Charlotte, which is a small market team that really just overpaid for him. <laughs> I mean, as a former North Carolinian, I I'd root for Charlotte, but at the same time, I don't see success being something that's coming soon for them. All right, that's fair. That's a Unless LaMelo Ball is like MVP ready, mm. I don't see it happening. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, any other notable ones you want to talk about? Brandon, Brandon Ingram stayed pat in New Orleans. This Christian Wood guy who I've heard of as being like a bench warmer, apparently as was like a really sought after free agent. Bench warmer. This, yeah. Uh, three or $41 million deal. He's going to go to Houston in a sign and trade. Okay. Um. Let's see here. Uh, uh, Goran Dragic stays put with Miami. Davis Bertans, who had a breakout season, stays with Washington, which is unfortunate for everybody involved. Um, Joe Harris stays with the Nets as the Nets continue to waste money. Yep. Um, yeah, that's really... The most of what I want to say, I like Jake Crowder to the Suns, a nice defensive player, as they already just acquired Chris Paul over the summer. So, all right. So, uh, now that the NBA is done, let's move on to the NHL. So, big thing with the NHL is they were trying to start by January 1st of next year. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. well, it, it is December. 
Uh, and yeah, they have. There's been no news surrounding any deal. So yeah, get, the possibility of that happening is dwindling every day. Yeah, get your playoff beard ready for whatever this shit show is going to be. Yeah, because we were we were talking about this the other day. This is just rock bottom, Gary Bettman once again. But like the team, the most recently have a lockout other than baseball because baseball was more like a labor dispute, not really a lockout. Um, and the NHL goes back to the disputing again. I mean, the other thing is like at this point, you're probably looking at like a some like forty or fifty game season. Which, as I I told you yesterday, like I'm fine with that. Yeah. yeah. That's- at some point, the seasons have to revert going back to like their normal schedule. Yeah, and the only way you're going to get to that at this point is having some reduced season anyway. Uh, all exactly. right, and so we want to talk about this? Yeah, so you had sent me an article that I had no chance to look at oh. uh, regarding a restart outlook. So if you could just uh, lead the discussion on this one. Well... Yeah, it was just basically going into all the points of like, okay, they have the trying, they're trying for the date of January 1st, but it doesn't look like that. And that's a lot of because, so how the NHL and the NHLPA made the agreement for the playoffs to even um, uh, continue was they put part of the player salary in escrow, which means it's like not paid out then, paid out later. Mm-hmm. Uh and so, in order to start this new season, the NHL is going to want more of that salary in escrow. It's not like they can pay it out. So, like, it's just it, it's just like an in depth look at that, and we basically covered it. And the fact that like it, they there's going to be concessions on both sides, whether it's like you know length of season or you know try to, in order to get this reduced no like oh total percentage pay mm-hmm. in there, because like. It's probably not profitable for either side at this point. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and we're it's also looking at like the fact that we have no news and it's December. The fact the probability we start January 1st is almost out the window. So we're probably looking at if we're lucky, it's like a mid January start. If we're lucky, it's probably going to be like a 40 game season. Mid January start, February. 40 game season will take us to April. I'd say February. Yeah, if we're lucky, it's like mid January. Well, if if baseball was any indicator, there's going to be at least a couple weeks of like hard, publicized uh, labor discussions, and I don't think we're at even that point yet. Yeah, I don't know. Well, again, luck. All right, you want to talk about the other image on this? Oh yeah, I found a Google image about. How uh, the Winter Classic, which is normally on the 1st of January each year, was supposed to be in Minnesota this year. Minnesota being a state that's going to be extremely cold and extremely likely to have a lot of COVID cases by then. Uh, so, yeah, that's not happening. Uh, <laughs> Especially the fact that we don't even have a season for January 1st. Nope, of course not. <laughs> that's Wouldn't that be great if that's thing. how... Wouldn't that be great if that's how the season started? Is they had a winter classic in front of no fans outdoors? Yeah. Like the whole appeal is to take it outside and put it in front of fans. Yeah. And if they just don't do that, that would be wild. Yeah. Uh, I mean, might, as, might as well just put it on like uh, on like I don't know a fleet ship. But also like you know seeing hockey outdoors is kind of cool. Like if there's no way in new jersey would ever get to see like a winter classic game anyway so hey you guys just go to new york for it i mean that's basically what you've done for every outdoor game yeah cross the hudson take the uh take uh penn station to the bronx and then uh realize that you paid a lot to be in yankee stadium and all the seats just look like outfield box seats <laughs> Yeah. Uh all right. Anything else you want to bring up? No, I know. Alright, well uh pretty short episode this one is. Yeah, Nothing just... we can really do about that. Yeah, so 
Yeah, thanks for tuning in and catch you next time.